Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Life, and in today's video, we're going to do some work on the carburetor on our Ford Workmaster 641. Stay tuned, we're going to tell you why I think this is necessary and what happened since the last video I made about our new Ford Workmaster tractor. So I mentioned in a previous video that we just picked up this 1957 Ford Workmaster 641 tractor. If you haven't checked that video out, go ahead, I'll put a link up above to that one. But we're really happy with this tractor. I hadn't had much time to play with it. As I said in the previous video, I actually got COVID and was sick for a week or so and not really able to be outside doing anything. So I didn't, I got to, you know, ride up and down the driveway and get the mail once in a while on the tractor, but I hadn't run it doing anything that would give the tractor a load. Now, if you'll recall, the owner of this tractor passed away a few years ago. It's been kind of sitting for a little bit, so I'm wondering if that kind of caused some problems with the carburetor. Because what I found since the last video is I did try to do some brush hogging yesterday, and when you put the brush hog under a load, the engine really surges. So you can feel the governor kicking in, giving it more gas, giving it more power, but it's constantly surging. It actually kind of jerks you as you're driving, and I'll put some video in of that when I was brush hogging yesterday. This Ford Workmaster does have the Marble Schebler carburetor on it, which was the carburetor that was on these originally. I have no idea if that's the original carburetor or not. And I'll be honest with you, I am not an expert on carburetors. So what I did learn from the uh, previous owners that sold this tractor to me was that sometimes when you're brush hogging or over time, this main jet will loosen up and they said you may need to tighten this back in because it works its way out over time. So that was the first thing I thought yesterday when it started doing that surging. They mentioned that was a symptom of when the main jet works its way out. So I did give it like a quarter turn and then a half turn. It did not solve the problem. I don't know that much about carburetors, but I do know this is the main jet and this is the idle jet. So those are the two things that people typically adjust when they're having running issues with their tractor at at least the starting point to see if that fixes the problem. Now I am dodging sprinkles out here today. I probably won't get a chance to try the brush hog again after I make these carb adjustments. But like I said, I'm not a carburetor expert and this is just the first thing I'm trying. Those of you out there who have had these old Ford tractors for a long time and know a lot more about those carburetors or about the fuel system and the air system than I do, I'd appreciate any tips you can give down below in the comments to help me get this thing running better under a load. Again, at an idle, driving up and down the driveway, runs perfectly, starts every single time. Most of the time, I don't even need to use the choke to start it. I don't know if that's uh, an indicator that maybe there's a little bit too much rich or not rich enough mixture in the first place, but, but so far I have not needed the choke to start this tractor. And like I said, ran great at an idle. You make it about above half of the throttle. The governor kicks in and it does that surging. It settles out with no load, but as soon as you put the brush hog or a load on the PTO, it just does that surging and then you're really jerking in gear going in and out of the area that you're trying to mow. So like I said yesterday, I did give this main jet a couple turns to try to tighten it in case it was working its way out and that did not solve the problem. In fact, it started running a little bit worse. I tried to adjust the idle screw just a little bit and it's kind of like adjusting the power seat in your car. Once you start messing with them, you can never get them back to the way they were. So then I was like, oh, I'm trying to remember how many turns did I move each thing and in which direction. So of course, what does everybody do when they start having trouble? They go to YouTube, they go online to the Yesterday Tractor Forum, the Ford Tractors Forums. And what I think I'm gonna do is go back to the starting point for this carburetor. What it says online to, let's say you just rebuilt this, you're putting it back on the tractor. 
where to set these when you first start out, and then we'll start from there adjusting. And again, I'm not an expert, so please leave your opinions on how to set these or what things I should check next if these don't give me a solution to my problem. Okay, so according to everything I found on the forum, it says to start out with both these screws in. So there's two and a half turns, three turns. We were about three turns out on that. We'll screw this one in. Quarter, half, three quarters, one turn. Quarter, half, three quarters. Two turns is how far we were out on that screw. And it says in the most of the forums that when you're first starting out with your carburetor after a rebuild, your idle screw should be about one full turn out and your main jet screw one half, three quarters, one turn, one quarter, one half, three quarters, two turns. So it says try it at two turns out and one turn out to get started. We'll go ahead and give this a start and see if you even start up at those new settings. I almost did it. I almost started the tractor without being on it, but I always say it's obviously the most safe to be on the tractor when you start it. We'll leave the throttle all the way down at idle. We did start right up. Give it some throttle here. It does seem to be idling nicely at our new idle screw setting. So what I noticed yesterday was when I'm going downhill here in the backyard, there was very little load on the tractor, it would run fine. When I turn around and I'm coming back up a little bit of a grade with the brush hog running, that creates that load on the engine, that's when it would surge and you could actually see the whole tractor surging. We'll see if those slight carburetor adjustments helped us out here, hopefully because I'm hoping it's that easy of a fix. So I would say that was actually a little bit better than it was yesterday. There is still some surging, so maybe there's still some more adjustment that needs done to that carburetor. Leave those comments down below. But for those of you who are having an issue like that with the surging of your tractor on a load, maybe start with those initial settings of one turn out on the idle screw and two full turns out on the main jet screw. See if that helps you out. It helped us out a little bit here, but I think I need still more advice down in the comments below. Is there a chance that it could be a governor issue? I'm not sure. The governor seems to be working properly. You know, if I climb a hill not running the brush hog, the governor does open up, gives me a little bit more power to climb that hill, and then as soon as I'm at the top of that grade, it closes back down a little bit and just lets it run at idle, idle speed again. So it seems like the governor is working okay in that aspect, but definitely under a load, something is causing this surging. Like I said, those adjustments made a little bit of an improvement, so I am happy with that. I'm also going to put some fresh gas in here. This has been setting for a while. Maybe it just needs some fresh gas in it. Maybe that'll help out. I'm hoping it doesn't need like a carburetor rebuild or something done with the governor that would be beyond my expertise. So please leave those comments down below if you think this is the right course of action to try to make some more small adjustments and what adjustments you would make next on that carburetor. If this video informed or entertained you at all, we'd really appreciate if you'd give us a thumbs up down below. As you know, that helps out the channel, helps out the video, and it lets me know that you like content about our new Workmaster tractor. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again the next time.